We moved to Enmore here about 20 k's out of Gundawindi three and a half years ago. In total, Enmore's uh, just under 1,200 acres or 470 odd hectares. Three quarters of it was farm, broadacre farming when we came here. Where we've got run some cows there, we're slowly improving that. Had some forage in there to, to improve the soil and look at putting some improved pastures in there in time. We've also taken back a small area of the farming to, to put some improved pasture in it. Part of our long-term vision and goal for the farm is to maintain the biodiversity. So tree lines are a really important part of that. We've planted about 120 trees over about a hectare behind us so that over time we'll, we'll be able to re-establish some of the tree lines and get that connectivity and those corridors back. We're really lucky here. We have Brigolo Balar country and, and melon hole country around us. Weeds in those tree lines like African boxthorn and Harissia cactus are a bit of a threat and get to a point where you can't get through them. So we try to target some of those tree lines so that we can improve access and also increase health, health and habitat. We worked with Mossy and Jono. They helped us come up with a mix and that's been really good. We've had adjustment cattle on that and the ground cover from that as well as the improvements we think in the soil health are pretty, pretty amazing been working with Pip and Dion for um, towards the end of last summer I think and they approached us about helping them understand some of the soil tests and and trying to make a bit of a plan for uh, working with the with the paddocks that they, that they had in mind to, to do something with. So once we had the soil tests and had a bit more understanding of uh, what the issues were we did choose some varieties that we knew could handle some of those constraints and some of those issues. When plants thrive in a certain environment it's usually because they have some competitive advantage over everything else that's trying to grow. What we commonly call weeds are actually a good indicator of what's trying to grow and will thrive in that area, so we look at those as well. When we planted the, the trees, we wanted to maintain what existed around here. We didn't want to throw in species that didn't thrive locally. So we planted Brigolo and Balar. We also planted Weeping Mile, because often in landscapes like this, Weeping Mile trees are found locally. I think there's a lot of people that do this sort of stuff but don't always share it and when you start talking to people you find out that actually uh, there's, there's a few of us around that are trying this and we're really lucky actually that we can bounce ideas off other people and off the professionals that we work with. We'll often say to farmers, what's your 100 year plan? You know, to really force them to think, hang on, I'm not going to be around 100 years but you know, if my, my kids or their kids are going to be around then I need to be start thinking that far out and then it helps bring them back. What do you want it to look like in a few years time? Sometimes it's embarrassingly simple what we do. It's getting clear on where we want to be, understanding where we are and just mapping a pathway to get it, get to it. And there's many different ways to do it. So when we, when we start working with farmers, we'll try to identify the, uh, what we call the big levers and the low hanging fruit. So what are the, what are the main things that are going to make a difference? Hats off to these guys having a go. They, they've actually started along the path of addressing their lack of organic matter and getting some ground cover there. And that'll put them instead to, to take advantage of that. We're really lucky that we've been able to work with Southern Queensland Landscapes to not only access funding, but also access their expertise. I think they've provided us with a really good opportunity to really improve our farm and, and it's been really beneficial.